So today, we're going to work on another type of procedural generation that we're going to call chunk map. Uh, but basically, we're going to make a whole bunch of rectangles, line them all up, and connect them into a whole bunch of rooms. Now, these this looks pretty bland, uh, unless you really like symmetrical shapes. But uh, it's just kind of the first step in a bigger idea that I've been listening to a guy. Uh, his name's Joris Dormans. He has a, a, a lecture on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description. And we're basically just going to work on this first section of it. We're hopefully going to skip around a little bit and uh, be able to get to some of these other ideas with this. But uh, basically, we're just going to get individual rooms set up and connected today. And hopefully in the future, we'll be able to put different types of rooms in here uh, that I've kind of covered in the past, like a cave structure or just any type of procedural generation that you want to put in there. So again, just another tile map, same tile set. I technically added another tile just for demonstration purposes later on. But let's go ahead and get right into the code. So. Uh, we have a current map size, a room size. Uh, these numbers really don't matter because we're going to randomize it in just a minute. We have an array to keep track of all the rectangles that are going to be our rooms. So one other thing I should mention is that we're going to use two different A star maps. And what I mean by that is one will be the tiles again. That'll be each individual tile connecting e to each other so we can carve out paths. And then another will be each room is going to be a point in the A-star map so we can tell which rooms are going to be connected. Uh, and that'll be useful later on, particularly when we decide that we don't want a room to be connected to another room, and we'll be able to cut those connections. So in the ready function, we'll go ahead and initiate both those A-star maps, and then we'll go ahead and make the map. In the process, it's just if I click Enter, I'm going to make a new map. When we make the map, first thing I like to do is just clear out everything. Even though we haven't even made anything yet, it's just when you make a map, just clear everything so you don't have all the extra points in your A-star maps. And also this clear, if you remember, this is extends a tile map. We're just going to clear out all the cells in the tile map and start fresh because it's kind of a different size every time because of what we're doing here. The map is going to be a random number. We're going to add random number between 25 and then add 25 to it. So it's never going to be lower than 25, and it will never be higher than 50. So we have, and we'll do the same thing for the rooms, just slightly smaller, because the rooms have to be smaller than the map, obviously. So then we'll move down to partition rooms. Now this looks a little bit silly. I'll just throw it out there that... Uh, this could just be commented that this is going to be the partition rooms. Uh, but a side note is that I was actually having quite a bit of trouble with this being a very time, uh, in, or just not being optimized very well. It took like 15 seconds or so to render a map, and I couldn't figure out why. So if you partition your code into different functions, uh, Godot actually has a really neat profiler where you can figure out, like, figure out what parts of your code are taking a long time, or what functions, I should say, are taking a long time. And so that's a story for another day, but I just thought I'd mention it. That's why I don't just have it commented that this is going to be partitions. And so obviously I found my, my bug, but... Uh, so when we partition the rooms, we're going to figure out how many rooms we actually want. And so I'm going to take the floor. I'm not going to round. I'm just going to take the floor of the current map size divided by the room size. And uh, the difference between floor and rounding is um, the floor always goes down. It always rounds down even if it's 6 or 7, point six or 7. Then we will loop through each of those rooms, and we will make a rectangle for each one of those rooms where we want to have the rectangle. And then, so remember, when we, we're going to make a lot of rectangles, so the first vector two is going to be the position that you want the rectangle, and the second one will be how big of a rectangle it is. So then we will append 
that rectangle to the rooms that we kept track or we had the array for for keeping track of. So we'll skip down to draw rooms real quick. So this basically I just drew all the rooms and then we'll connect the hallways afterwards. So if you I guess if I comment out this, you'll be able to see. So I have only I've only draw the floor instead of drawing the floor everywhere and then drawing the walls on top of I decided to put just the interior of the rooms down. So how I did that was this function here, or this draw rooms. And it's kind of looks silly, but if you don't understand what's happening in this code, uh, you should just copy it and then mess around with it for a while. Like take this two out and see what happens, how it moves the tiles around. and it's pretty clear once you do it a few times. Uh, so this is the the floors, and then this will be the walls. So then, this first part, we're going to make the tile a star. Now, this code is literally copy and pasted out of my a star pathing tutorial that I've already put up. So basically, just every point of the tile set gets a point and then it's connected to each point right next to it. So if you want more information about that you can check out my A star pathing tutorial. So then we're going to connect the hallways or connect each room and make hallway connections. So I guess I just cleared out the A star map just to make sure it was empty. It doesn't hurt anything to clear it twice. So we're going to for starters start with just the middle of the room. So for each room, we're going to figure out where the middle of the room is. This commented out stuff I'll show you in just a minute. It's so we can get a little bit of randomness in the hallways as opposed to just being the middle of the room. Uh, but we're going to add that middle of the room point. So we have to add all of the points before we can connect the points because we have to know which points we can connect to. So that's why we loop through the same exact thing twice. We're going to loop through the rooms in or the room in rooms twice. So to check for neighbors to the rooms, I'm going to use a couple of built-in functions into the rect2 uh, node, which the first will be grow individual and then intersects. So when you grow an individual, you get a rectangle so we're basically we're going to make a copy of the room and then we're going to grow it uh, a little bit I believe these numbers are left top right bottom so you decide which ways it's going to grow and then we're going to have two of them to make a plus sign that's just slightly larger than our room to see if we have adjacent neighbor rooms now the reason why I just didn't use one rectangle is I didn't want to get the corners the corner rooms to be technically counted as neighbors. I just wanted to get the ones that were adjacent on the sides. So we're going to first loop through rooms and then we're going to loop through rooms again. And so the reason for that is we're going to want to go to each room and then see if each other room is a neighbor. So the first thing we'll do is if the room is the same room that we're looking at we're going to just skip it we're going to continue and then go to the next one. And if it isn't the same room, we will use our neighbor rectangles, our, our check rectangles, and we will see if that neighbor room will intersect with those. And if it intersects with either one of them, then we will get the closest A star map point for the room A star, and we will connect those points. I should scroll over so you can see the very end of that. So after we connected the points, we still have to draw our hallways with the tile map. So we're going to get each point, and then we will, for each point, uh, this get points is a built in A star function that returns an array of all the points and we will loop through that array and we will check it for connections. This is another built-in uh, A star map. You get 
the connections for that point. And for each connection, this is probably the most confusing part of this whole code, is for each connection, we are going to want a path uh, from or for the tile A star map. We're going to get a path, and we're going to get the closest point in the tile A star map that is at the position of the point from the room A star map. So what that looks like is, so when we have our, our A star points for each room, we're going to get the position of that point, and then we're going to find the tile that's on that position. So that's basically all this is saying. Uh, we want to get a path from the first point. So this is the first room that we're we're looking at, and this second part is the the second room that it's connected to. And then once we have our path, we will just set the cells to the floor. Now I added that third uh, tile type just to kind of show you. It doesn't look as good, but this is basically what's happened is you have built all these connections and then you redo the floors, but it also includes the hallways. Now while I have that switched, we'll go up here and basically with this comment, I'm going to comment this out and uncomment here. Basically what this does is it just moves the middle of the room around a little bit so that way it's not exactly in the middle of the room. And so what I mean by that is it offsets them slightly. And the reason for that is just so you don't get hallways in exactly the same place. And sometimes you get double hallways. Um, like I said, this tile this third tile doesn't necessarily look that great, but it's just so you can see the paths that you've created. And we'll go ahead and turn that off so you can just see the end result. And it makes it a little bit more interesting, opposed to just being the exact same symmetrical shape all the time. So in the future, I hope to make each individual room a different type of procedural generation. That way, it adds a little bit more flavor throughout. That way, you can explore different rooms that are completely different uh, just for fun.